In the heart of Nova Scotia, the Legina brothers and their crew are attempting to solve the centuries-old mystery of Oak Island. Just when they thought they had seen everything, an antique map appears, showing a secret hatch. What mysteries does this fascinating hatch contain? Will it take them closer to the island's legendary wealth or further into danger? Join us on this thrilling journey as we dig deep into Oak Island's biggest mystery. Rick Marty and the others gathered around a huge table in the dimly lit war room, deep in conversation with local historian Doug Crowell. Zena Halpern, a Knights Templar researcher, spoke over the phone, her enthusiasm evident as she presented her new finding, which she hoped may ultimately reveal the secrets of Oak Island. Zena's comments came out quickly, explaining two old maps and a secret code. The first map, she explained, had a date that sent chills down their spines. 1179, written in Roman numerals. Oak Island was well represented, with its location precisely located between latitudes 46 and 47. But what grabbed their interest the most was the Rodon dot over Oak Island, which Zena firmly identified as New Ross, a settlement many felt was tied to Henry Sinclair's legendary trip to Nova Scotia in 1398. The room was alive with expectations and fascination. Could these maps be the key to discovering Oak Island's legendary treasures? With Zena's revelation, the team's determination was strengthened and their search for answers reopened. As they considered the significance of these old geological clues, it became evident that the mystery of Oak Island was far from solved. In the land of Oak Island's secrets, New Ross, Nova Scotia, occupies an important spot, with some believing it to be the location of an ancient Templar strengthening built in the late 1300s. According to mythology, Scottish Templar Knight Prince Henry Sinclair built this following his known visit to Oak Island. However, subsequent finds and theories point to a more complicated history. Zena Halpern's groundbreaking study, as well as the maps she provided to the team, have opened up new lines of investigation. While many have long connected Henry Sinclair's journey with the Templar presence on Oak Island, Zena's discoveries point to a time frame that comes before Sinclair by more than 200 years. Could it be that the Templars arrived in the region long before Sinclair's reported expedition? And if so, what does this indicate for New Ross's history and relationship to Templar activity? The maps are crucial to this topic. Zena's map of Nova Scotia provides a complete overview of the area, but the French map of Oak Island adds another layer of mystery. The Oak Island map, said to date back to 1347, is an intriguing riddle. Its portions are labeled in French indicating a potential French presence on the island at the time. Marty Legina, a crucial member in the Oak Island investigation, emphasized the importance of the French map. And then there are several things named in French which have been translated for us. He identified crucial elements such as the basin, which most likely refers to the swamp on the Nolan side of the island, and the marsh, which relates to the swamp itself. The reference to what's called the dam. Additionally, the map mentions a dam, which corresponds to Fred Nolan's finding of a log wall in that location. Marty also noticed an odd writing on the map, Oak Enter Year, which appears to go exactly to the site of the famous Money Pit. And then we have two or three things that we don't know anything about. However, the chart also includes mysterious terms like anchors, valve, and hatch, which violate simple explanations. These untranslated and unexplained phrases contribute to Oak Island's mystery and hint at hidden mysteries waiting to be discovered. As the crew examines the maps and explores their effects, a new narrative about Oak Island's past arises. The likelihood of Templar presence on the island long before Henry Sinclair's time calls into doubt the actual origins of the island's riddles. Perhaps the Templars left behind clues, valuables, or even a castle that has yet to be discovered. The search to discover Oak Island's mysteries continues, motivated by Zena Halpern's discoveries and the intriguing hints hidden beneath ancient maps. With each new find, the team gets closer to solving the mystery that has captivated treasure seekers and historians for ages. The narrative of Oak Island is far from finished, and as the crew explores further into its history, they may discover the answers to its long standing puzzles. Also, the secret hatch on Oak Island mentioned in McGinnis' family legend, 
contributes to the island's mystery nature. According to one member, all it takes is the idea of digging to reveal this hatch, suggesting its hidden position and maybe a warning about risks that lie below. To confirm the accuracy of these claims, the team feels forced to do more research. They compare the details on their maps to the known characteristics of the island, noting that although certain components match exactly, others are completely foreign. Determined to discover the truth, they intend to look for these undiscovered substances, believing they may hold the key to solving Oak Island's secrets. Rick Legina recognizes the island's complex history and understands that much work has to be done. Despite their concerns about Xena's study providing clear answers, they recognize the significance of following every clue. Oak Island's past is based on rumor, theory, and hope. Thus, it is critical to evaluate all possibilities. Xena's study stands out for its unique documentation, which adds weight to her views. Rick is well aware that ignoring this study without an in-depth examination might result in a wasted opportunity. With Oak Island's history covered in mystery and assumption, each piece of evidence, no matter how minor, requests examination. After discovering an antique map of Oak Island, Rick, Marty, and their crew are drawn to a mysterious depression near Dave Blankenship's house. They approach, intrigued by its possible importance. Jack Begley takes the lead, taking the team to the Yukon's rise, where he combines the historic French map with Xena's current satellite images. The connection is incredibly exact, with the map's tip ends parallel to the shoreline and completely matching the present-day scene. Excitement grows as Jack points out that beneath the mapped area is Dave's driveway, which intersects the main road and even contains a rough image of Dave's home. This alignment provides another element of intrigue, suggesting a purposeful link between the ancient map and modern landscape. Jack then draws everyone's attention to their search area, stressing the absence of an accurate account of the hatch's look. This assessment highlights the difficulties ahead as they must rely on previous hints to direct their quest for the mysterious hatch. The alignment of the French map with the satellite photographs revealed a shining anomaly, a hole where the hatch should be. Dave's finding of this alignment caused excitement among the crew, suggesting the presence of the long-rumored hatch on Oak Island. The group is thrilled about the map's connection and the possible importance of the hole near Dave's house. They are anxious to dive more into this find hoping to learn the mysteries that may be hidden beneath the mysterious hatch. Rick and Marty are engaged in an intense debate over the consequences of the find, taking into account the area's historical setting and the potential of a connection to the Templars or other ancient civilizations. Despite the challenges and uncertainties, they are determined to properly investigate the area in the hopes of solving Oak Island's long-standing mysteries. David Blankenship, excited by the French map's match with the satellite picture, directs Jack Begley to get a rod while they continue their search. They enthusiastically follow the path shown on the map, hoping to discover the enigmatic hatch that Xena Halpern's 14th century map reportedly showed. As they go through the region, the crew speculates on the hatch's probable importance. Could it bring them back into the famed money pit, providing a fresh entrance to its mysterious depths? Perhaps it leads to an even larger treasure that has been hidden beneath Oak Island's surface for centuries. Marty Legina expresses surprise at the finding, calling it the strangest thing they've seen on that side of the island. The team's enthusiasm is obvious as they approach the site shown on the map, their imaginations running wild with the possibilities that await. As they arrive at the stated location, they begin to carefully explore the environment, looking for any evidence of the hidden hatch. The earth beneath their feet is electrified with expectation, with each member of the team realizing that they may be on the edge of making a major discovery. With the rod in hand, Jack begins examining the earth, hoping to detect the revealing resistance that indicates the presence of a hidden hatch. The crew watches carefully, their breath caught in expectation, as Jack moves systematically over the region shown on the map. Suddenly, Jack's rod comes into contact with something significant, and he pauses, an excited expression on his face. Could this be it? Could they have discovered the legendary hatch that has avoided treasure hunters for centuries? As Jack continues to investigate, the crew gathers around, eager to discover the secrets hidden under Oak Island's surface. As they struggle to uncover the hatch, the team experiences astonishment and astonishment. What lies beyond this limit? Which secrets will be revealed? 
Only time will tell. As a new day arrives at the Oak Island, Rick, Marty, and their crew explore a strange square-shaped opening on the western side of Oak Island with the assistance of archaeologist Laird Niven. This discovery might be a crucial clue in solving the island's long-standing mystery. The key to solving this issue is to determine if the hatch is man-made or ancient in nature. If verified, it might be a huge step forward for the Legina brothers in their attempt to solve the Oak Island mystery. As Laird carefully inspects the hatch, he finds proof of human activity. Some stones appear to have been removed, while others are loosely placed, suggesting purposeful building. Marty theorizes that the hatch is the entrance of a tunnel, citing evidence that at least one side leads to a corridor. However, more study is necessary, such as getting permission and removing the area of tiny trees. Marty guarantees that they will be in line with all standards, asking the crew whether there are any limits on using a hand shovel for excavation. Despite the additional time and work necessary for approval, Rick and Marty decide to share their results with the authorities. They realize the necessity of following rules and feel that contacting the Canadian government will help the examination in the long run. Rick and Marty's choice to involve the Canadian government demonstrates their dedication to conducting treasure hunting in a responsible and scientific manner. Despite decades of uncontrolled excavation on the island, they want to conduct their investigation with sensitivity to the environment and the island's possible historical value. Many think that Oak Island is more than simply a possible treasure location. It is also a national treasure and even a divine archaeological site. Rick and Marty seek to preserve the island's integrity and reveal its mysteries responsibly by following proper procedures and consulting authorities. The Legina Brothers' approach contrasts with the excess and destructive techniques of previous treasure seekers. They are committed to use modern technology and archaeological techniques to properly excavate and examine the island, aiming to reveal its secrets while conserving its historical and environmental significance. It was the start of a new day on Oak Island, and the team, consisting of Rick, Marty, and other members, gathered in Smith's Cove. Their objective was the residence of Dan Blankenship, a key member in the Oak Island mystery. Their aim is to find information that will lead them to another drilling location, the third in their relentless search for the famous Oak Island Money Pit. Dan Blankenship has dedicated his life to Oak Island for almost 50 years, gathering an extensive collection of maps, measurements, photographs, and eyewitness testimonies dating back to the 1840s. The 93-year-old expert treasure hunter's immense reservoir of information, however, was far more valuable than the real artifacts. Blankenship's house served as an archive for Oak Island's rich history, a location where the past and present linked in a web of intrigue and mystery. Upon entering, guests were transported across time, as every inch of his basement gave evidence to his life's labor and commitment. The basement was a perfectly organized archive, with shelves along the walls, each containing a piece of Oak Island's hidden puzzle. Maps, some faded with time, were laid out, exposing the island's mysteries as viewed through the eyes of long-forgotten explorers. Handwritten measurements and sketches indicated the great planning and effort put into solving the island's riddles. The walls were covered with images that captured moments of triumph and tragedy, each telling its own tale. Despite this rich mine of artifacts and documentation, Dan proved to be the most important living reminder of Oak Island history. His memory was a living record, full with stories and anecdotes handed down through generations of treasure hunters. As he shared his expertise with Rick, Marty, and the crew, it was clear that his enthusiasm for Oak Island had not decreased with age. Dan's stories brought Oak Island's past to life, creating a vivid picture of the obstacles, victories, and defeats encountered by those who came before. His passion was contagious, imparting a sense of surprise and delight in everyone who listened. In his basement, surrounded by the echoes of the island's history, Dan Blankenship stood as a living legend a bridge between the riddles of Oak Island's past and the search for answers that continues to this day. In the early 1930s, Melbourne Chapel, a committed treasure seeker, carefully produced a comprehensive sketch of the Money Pit region, detailing where he felt the original pit was. Chapel's faith in his findings encouraged him and his father, William, to begin the ambitious building of a secret tunnel that they thought would bring them straight to the legendary treasure vault. Their efforts were unexpectedly cut short when seawater from one of the fabled flood tunnels flooded their shaft, leaving them pointless. 
Marty and Rick discovered the evidence of Chapel's failed excavation earlier this year while digging a borehole in Valley 3. As the crew gathered to plan their next move, Marty highlighted a serious concern about the location of their third drilling site. The Fellowship members debated on where this hole should be placed. Craig argued for a northeastern position, although Rick and David preferred a southwestern orientation. This difference of view created uncertainty and encouraged them to reevaluate their strategy. Complicating matters further was the expected delivery of a big piece of equipment, which added urgency to their decision-making process. To ensure they made the best possible decision, the team agreed to acquire further information and engage in further discussion. The outcome of their hunt for the Oak Island riches hung in the balance as they considered their alternatives and decided on the best course of action. While waiting for operations to return at the Money Pit on Oak Island, Rick Legina, accompanied by island historian Charles Barkhouse and fellow explorer Jack Begley, asks for the help of stonemasons Mike Welling and Mark Fugier to investigate one of the island's most intriguing mysteries the enigmatic Nolan's Cross. Their major goal is to evaluate whether the massive stones that form the cross show evidence of human creations. Their attention is on the cross's headstone, where its arms and stem join, a spot that is especially significant because of the findings made by Fred Nolan, the landowner and thorough investigator, in 1981. Fred discovered five massive cone-shaped stones on his land, set in a perfectly symmetrical cross measuring an impressive 720 by 867 feet. Fred was intrigued by this unusual shape and suspected that something important was hidden in its center. His curiosity pushed him to look more, finally locating a sixth stone that resembled a massive human head. The team's research of Nolan's Cross promises to reveal not just the likelihood of human involvement in its construction, but possibly the presence of buried treasures or major historical artifacts inside its boundaries. While many have long considered that the mysterious stones of Nolan's cross were set to represent a Templar cross, another idea proposes a far more complex and significant design. This theory argues that the stones were purposefully arranged to depict the Tree of Life, a deep symbol in ancient Hebrew mysticism that represents the ten spiritual principles, or Sephiroth, involved in God's creation of the universe. Support for this idea grew as smaller stones with unusual flat edges were discovered neatly set around the cross, matching the Sephiroth. These stones, with their rounded backs and flat sides, have patterns that closely resemble face features like eyes and lips. Furthermore, the existence of traces indicating where a little navy sword or navel blade may have been put adds to the mystery surrounding the location. The theory that Nolan's cross was intentionally built to resemble the Tree of Life raises questions about the Founder's motives and beliefs. If correct, this idea might indicate that the area has a great spiritual or religious importance, perhaps leading to other findings that give information on the ancient practices or beliefs of individuals who built it. Mike Welling and Mark Fougere examine Nolan's cross and discover fascinating elements that might support either viewpoint. Their knowledge sheds light on the nature of the rock formation raising fresh questions regarding its origins and function. Rick, Charles, and Jack carefully consider the consequences of their discoveries, recognizing the importance of Nolan's cross in the larger context of Oak Island's riddles. As they wait for more developments at the Money Pit, their attention is pulled to this fascinating location where the past and present cross in a complicated puzzle waiting to be solved. The significance of Nolan's cross goes beyond its physical form, acting as a symbol of the island's rich past and continued search for answers. Whether it signifies a Templar cross, the Tree of Life, or something else completely, its presence on Oak Island continues to fuel interest and mystery. The weathering of Nolan's cross over the years has greatly impacted its appearance, with one team member stating that it looked entirely different 20 years ago. While the other stones in the cross are usually granite and cone-shaped, this one is flatter, suggesting its own past and function. Rick believes that the arrangement of the stone's face, particularly the eye, may suggest that it was intended to face a prominent region. While this is their suspicion, they hope that Mike and Mark, the stonemasons, will be able to give further information about the stones and their importance. Despite the mystery around Nolan's cross, Rick is realistic about its possibilities. He admits that, while it's an amazing find, it's unlikely to lead to wealth or other significant discoveries.
However, he emphasizes the significance of beginning somewhere in their search for answers and feels that talking with specialists, such as Mike and Mark, is the best way to go. The team's approach displays their dedication to conducting a thorough and demanding examination of Oak Island's riddles. While they remain hopeful that Nolan's Cross will give useful information, they are willing to accept that it may not supply all of the answers they seek. Nonetheless, they are determined to pursue every clue and investigate every path in their search for the truth about Oak Island's mysterious past. Next day, the crew chooses to investigate the bottom of Nolan's Cross, picturing it straight as a cone-shaped granite block weighing up to five tons. This investigation seeks to drive a better understanding of the stone's original orientation and purpose, providing a new perspective on this fascinating structure. All five stones at Nolan's Cross are granite and have a similar form. The crew wonders if they've located a stone that's close enough to what they need, requiring just limited modifications, or if it was purposefully moved into its current location. The stonemasons, Mark Fougere and Mike Welling, Note that the stone's surface is extremely smooth, unlike any natural granite they had seen before. This irregularity raises issues regarding the stone's origin and history, suggesting the potential of purposeful activity by humans. This rock at the base of Nolan's Cross, located in the center of Oak Island on land held by Fred Nolan's family, may provide essential clues. Its flawless surface against the rough texture of the surrounding granite suggests that it was purposefully cut and put adding to the mystery and fascination of the location. Rick Legina discusses the significance of the discovery, stating that the stones of Nolan's Cross appear to have been transported a long distance and precisely positioned in their current arrangement. The smoothness of the bottom rock contrasts strongly with the roughness of the remainder of the stone, suggesting a deliberate and possibly purposeful change. The team's discovery offers up fresh paths for investigation and speculate. Could this smooth boulder be an important part of a bigger, unknown construction or monument on Oak Island? Or does it provide clues to the origin and function of Nolan's Cross, shedding light on the island's mysterious history? As they continue to investigate Nolan's Cross and its surroundings, the crew is attracted by the secrets of Oak Island. Each find, no matter how little, contributes to the hints and mysteries that have long surrounded the island's famous treasures. Their careful approach and attention to detail demonstrate their commitment to discovering the mysteries of Oak Island in a respectful and systematic manner. While the ultimate aim of locating treasure remains hidden, the voyage itself is packed with excitement, discovery, and the pleasure of learning Oak Island's rich and mysterious history. A few days later, Rick Legina, along with a team member and Terry DeVoe, meet to discuss a stone that Terry believes is not well known, with just a few people, including himself, aware of its existence. Terry describes inviting Rick, Craig Tester, and Dave Blankenship to Overton, 144 miles west of Oak Island, a year ago. He showed them a collection of sculptures said to be hundreds of years old, including an amazing Christian symbol, a cross with a circle. This discovery raises the idea of a connection between Peggy's Cove and the Oak Island mystery, despite their geographical distance. Terry describes how he discovered the stone around four years ago while looking for historic walls, foundations, and petroglyphs, which are rock engraving. He was instantly struck by the fact that the stone did not appear to be a natural boulder or rock, but rather had been carefully worked. This discovery encouraged him to do more research into the stone's significance. In recent years, Rick Marty and the team have uncovered a number of unusual and potentially significant stone sculptures on and around Oak Island. From New Ross to the Bedford Barrens, they question if these carvings were purposefully made as clues to assist solve the Oak Island mystery. As they inspect the rock, they observe various distinguishing characteristics, including a mouth, nose, and the rock's orientation towards the sea. Terry explains that the stone was modified into its current location, as shown by the smaller rocks beneath it. In addition, the rock's shape has been altered to highlight its facial characteristics. The crew notices textural differences across the rock, suggesting that specific portions were purposely cleaned off to improve its look. While some surfaces display natural weathering, others are the result of purposeful design. The discovery of this finely carved rock raises several concerns regarding its origin, function, and the people who crafted it. Could this stone be another piece of the Oak Island puzzle, revealing more about its mysterious past? Terry's discovery adds to the gathering body of evidence indicating that Oak Island and its surroundings may hold more mysteries than previously believed. The team's passion to solve these puzzles is clear in their thorough analysis of every stone, inscription, and artifact they come across. 
After much waiting, the steel caisson has finally arrived at its destination, perhaps discovering the mystery wood building spotted by Rick and Craig Tester two years earlier. According to historical documents, the excavation revealed wood within a foot of the estimated position, indicating that they are on the correct track. Marty Legina emphasizes the necessity of proving they have reached the vault, expressing confidence that they have discovered something big. He is excited to see if this is the vault they've been looking for. A little disagreement occurs between the Legina brothers on the future steps. Marty demands they resume excavating, convinced that the framework has already been penetrated. In contrast, Rick advises carefulness, pushing for an all-stop moment to avoid harming any possibly major historical or archaeological treasures within the structure. Rick's worry points out the delicate balance between excavation and preservation, demonstrating a desire for extensive research while preserving the site's historical and archaeological significance. The team's approach demonstrates their commitment to solving Oak Island's riddles with care and accuracy. Rick and Marty Legina face a critical choice as they consider their alternatives for digging the mystery wooden construction. The decision of whether to dig strongly or carefully creates a problem, especially given the high expenditures of the process. With a large crew and expensive equipment in place, the pressure to achieve progress grows regardless of which technique they use. They seek advice from Charles Barkhouse. While Barkhouse thinks that concrete proof should drive their decision-making, Marty is more inclined to keep digging, viewing this as an opportunity for more investigation. After making a find that might potentially solve the Oak Island mystery, the Legina brothers debate the best course of action. Should they use the enormous hammer grasp to raise whatever is within the wooden box, risking harm to its potential contents, or should they go more cautiously, examining the area further to keep any findings intact? Marty expresses doubt regarding the existence of a vault, emphasizing the importance of proceeding gently to prevent spoiling any prospective discoveries. Vanessa, the ROC equipment manager, advises them to take a cautious approach and examine the situation before going with additional excavation. Despite their disagreements, Marty recognizes Rick's cautious attitude, noting their lengthy history of conflicts. He emphasizes the necessity of taking Rick's advice to stop and reconsider their plan, acknowledging the advantages of an organized strategy. Rick's hesitation regarding using brutal force originates from his opinion that something big happened at the location, and he is determined not to compromise any prospective findings. Following considerable consideration, the crew chooses to proceed with the operation, although with increased care and a commitment for preserving whatever findings they may make. Parallelly, Charles Barkhouse and investigative journalist Randall Sullivan discover a probable clue relating the Oak Island mystery to William Kidd, the infamous 17th century pirate captain. They examine a map and see a listing for Kidd's treasure, which was scribbled in by the mapmaker. This information suggests that there was once a belief that Captain Kidd's wealth was hidden on Oak Island, emphasizing the island's lengthy history with pirates. During the late 17th century, Captain William Kidd rose to fame as a pirate, robbing trade ships from the Caribbean Sea to the Indian Ocean. In 1699, he was caught and deported to England, where he was convicted and executed for his crimes. This finding adds an intriguing element to the Oak Island mystery, suggesting a probable historical connection between the pirate leader and the wealth sought for generations. The reference of Kidd's treasure on the map means that the rumor of hidden riches on Oak Island has a long history, maybe reaching back to Captain Kidd himself. Charles Barkhouse and Randall Sullivan's discovery opens up new lines of research forcing them to explore more into the historical documents and traditions surrounding Captain Kidd and his probable link to Oak Island. The map's mention of Kidd's treasure increases the possibility that the pirate hid his wealth on the island, adding to the already intriguing Oak Island mystery. Despite Captain William Kidd's powerful appeal for forgiveness, pledging to expose a mystery wealth buried east of Boston in return for his life, he was executed on May 23, 1701. This raises fascinating concerns concerning Kidd's probable involvement in the Oak Island mystery. Could Captain Kidd be the mastermind of the Oak Island mystery? The stories that link the island to pirates and hidden wealth take on fresh meaning in light of Kidd's plea and his reputation as a legendary pirate. In their inquiry, Charles Barkhouse and Randall Sullivan look into the McGinnis file, namely Daniel McGinnis one of the initial discoverers of the Oak Island Money Pit. Their inquiry brings them to a book titled Western Shore, Gold River, Martins Point Communities, which may provide significant information. The connection between Captain Kidd and Oak Island 
adds another element of fascination to the centuries-old mystery. Kidd's offer to sell knowledge on a buried treasure in return for his life suggests that he was engaged in the concealment of riches, most probably on Oak Island. As Barkhouse and Sullivan unearth additional information, the likelihood of a link between Kidd and Oak Island grows more likely. The hunt for answers leads them further into historical documents and stories, giving light on the possible reality behind tales of pirate wealth and hidden treasure on the island. While researching the book, Western Shore, Gold River, Martin's Point Communities, Charles Barkhouse and Randall Sullivan come upon an intriguing story from December 20, 1863. The story tells the dying confession of an old sailor who claimed to have been a member of Captain Kidd's company. According to the confession, the sailor aided Kidd and his supporters in burying more than $2 million in cash beneath the soil on a remote island east of Boston. This astounding discovery suggests that Captain Kidd's riches might be hidden at the bottom of the Oak Island money pit. In 1804, searchers from the Onslow Company uncovered a big, smooth stone slab at a depth of 90 feet in the money pit, adding to the story's fascination. The stone included unusual engravings that, when translated, read 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. The markings on the 90-foot stone establish a direct connection to the old sailor's deathbed confession, lending weight to the theory that kids' wealth is concealed on Oak Island. This finding reignites the age-old discussion about the Oak Island mystery and the tale of pirate gold buried on the island. As Barkhouse and Sullivan explore deeper into the historical documents and tales surrounding Captain Kidd and Oak Island, they discover a captivating story that points to a buried treasure of enormous worth. The attraction of discovering Captain Kidd's riches adds another layer to the Oak Island mystery, motivating their drive to discover the truth behind the stories. One of the most difficult aspects of Oak Island, according to a writer and scholar, is its scattered historical record. While there are scattered bits and pieces of material to work with, putting together the island's history is similar to completing a difficult jigsaw. The process involves thoroughly reviewing historical records, maps, and reports, as well as researching oral traditions and local tales. Every discovery, no matter how major or apparently insignificant, is like locating a missing piece of the puzzle. These pieces of knowledge are critical in solving the riddles surrounding Oak Island. However, the procedure is not without problems. The historical record is sometimes fragmentary or unclear, allowing for speculation and interpretation. Despite these hurdles, academics and historians are motivated by the attraction of learning the truth about Oak Island's mysterious past. Each new revelation gets them closer to unlocking the island's mysteries and unearthing long-lost riches. The process involves not just seeking answers, but also conserving and writing down the island's history for future generations. In the beginning, we saw the discovery of a hatch on Oak Island's western side that sparked Rick, Marty, and the crew's enthusiasm, leading them to ask for permission and expert validation. While visiting Nolan's Cross managed to lower their expectations, the hatch's interesting smooth bottom among sharp granite caused interesting concerns about its origins. Terry DeVoe's discovery of a secret stone sculpture added another dimension to the island's mysterious past. Furthermore, Dan Blankenship's five-decade career on Oak Island has resulted in an extensive collection of historical artifacts and information that continues to improve the search. Are you interested to learn more about Oak Island? So, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to stay up to date. Thank you for watching.